Well, the biggest issues facing Dana Point are the, are the same basically annually. We have, right now we have public safety is always our, our biggest concern. If you really want to know what's going on in a, especially a small city like Dana Point, look at our budget and see where we spend our money. Then that'll show you our priorities. And our largest budget uh, uh, expense is our public safety and our sheriff's contract. So because of who we are and, and where we live and, and the types of visitors we serve, it's incredibly important that we're a very safe city and we took that very seriously. Hi, my name's Joe Miller and I'm the mayor of Dana Point, California. This is my second term as mayor and we are looking forward to a fantastic year. Moving forward in, in, into this year, one of the biggest struggles we're gonna have is probably dealing with housing. Uh, the state is putting a lot of, pushing a lot of mandates and new laws down on us that are taking away a lot of our local control. Uh, they're really advancing a one size fits all approach and that, that, that just doesn't work. It, it's more designed for the larger cities the small you know, suburban communities like Dana Point, especially beach communities where we don't have huge work centers or public transit, transit hubs, it doesn't really fit down here and it makes it incredibly difficult for us. Well, the goals and priorities never really change. Economic development's always a big, a big issue for us. Uh, we're a small city, we have to look for new revenue streams. Uh, right now we're, we're visitor serving, which means a large portion of our revenue comes from our hotel taxes and our bed taxes. I do think Dana Point should become the music capital of Orange County. We have these beautiful beaches down here. We have our great parks. We do a lot of different events for our community. Well, I was just at a meeting yesterday about Cap Capistrano Beach with all the beach erosion that's going on down there. It, it's been a, I sit on OC Parks as well, and that's, a, that's an Orange County park. And so we, we try to bring the stakeholders together. Lisa Bartlett, who's our county supervisor, is spearheading bringing this group together. She's done a good job. She had state parks there. She had Caltrans there. Um, county parks was there. Um, we have a, a couple consultants in San Clemente, Dana Point, Laguna Beach, and some other state, stakeholders were there as well. And our goal is to come up with a plan on how do you protect this coastal access? You know, Coastal Commission, that's their main goal, is to protect coastal access, but with their managed retreat um, uh, policy, it's, it's eliminating it, especially in a city like Dana Point, where we're classified as coastal high bluff. So what that means is we, our beach is back, basically back up to a bluff. Right down at Kappa, we go, we go from the beach, the railroad track, to, to Coast Highway to a bluff. And if that sand is gone, there will be no coastal access. And how do we protect that? That, that part of Capo is where the surf industry really originated. That's where Hobie sketched the Hobie cat into the sand at Capo Beach. That's where it all started here. And so how do we give that up? That's part of our, our history and our heritage. We shouldn't have to. Already we've, we've turned in or submitted our housing plan and we have to zone certain areas of the city to allow for, for affordable housing. What they've done is they've created these by right law provisions that are very common convoluted because you have other law, state laws that contradict them. So that's one of the biggest struggles we have. And that's why I came up back to when I said we're in the coastal zone and we're out of the coastal zone. We've actually passed uh, a couple ordinances for the residents that don't live in the coastal zone. Uh, but the, inside the coastal zone, we're waiting for HCD and the Coastal Commission to, to try to you know, rect resolve the conflicts between the, the laws and the ordinances that they're trying to uh, impose on us. So. It's something that we take very seriously, and we're, we're doing our best to make sure we comply with, with all the state laws that, that we're required to reply with, and actually maintaining the integrity of our neighborhoods. Most of these laws are, are designed to, to eliminate single family zoning. And that's one of the things people move here for is because they don't want to be in high density housing. We have that in our community, it's here. We've had it for a long time. We meet our RENA numbers, which is our, if you're not familiar with RENA, but that's your low income housing allotment from the state. Uh, we meet that number and we always have. So with what they're doing, and this is what the, the, the struggle that we have, is we meet that number, but they're still trying to force more onto us and it, and it doesn't make a lot of sense. We, it, it creates other economic problems, quality of life problems, um, and, and how, do you, how do you move into a neighborhood with a certain set of rules and the state says that those don't, those don't, they don't matter anymore.